Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jaser. In this video, I'm going to talk about idempotence, uh, which is something I learned recently. Um, I'm not sure whether you have heard of it before or not, uh, but I bet you have heard of a purity uh, if you're using React, right? For well, the first time the functional component is uh, introduced, we are, um, uh, uh, not the function component, I think the hooks, right? We are uh, encouraged to uh, put our code of side effects into the use effect hooks. Um, yeah, because like a functional component, it's naturally we think it should be like pure, right? But pure, if you search on the Wikipedia, it means that the function does nothing rather than interacting with local variables designed in a function scope. It does not communicate with uh, the outside um, or like uh, uh, not altering things outside the function. So if we are requesting like API, attach even listeners, there are obviously side effects. We should put it in the use effect hooks. So actually the fun functions with effect is not pure, right? But we still have this pure model, uh, which means that, yeah, we better make it pure and use like mammal or something else to boost up the performance. But with the introduce of suspense in the new, new uh, latest React version, if we take a look at the example here, like these profile details, we just uh, yeah create a resource by fetching profile data from the function name. We know that there must be some API uh, fetching in this function. And then we just read it. If this is not ready, it, this is going to throw. If it is not ready, we just, this is going to throw in a promise and uh, the React, uh, via, uh, React runtime would suspend this fun fun component. By suspense, it actually literally means that it will not render the whole tree with the rest. It will just stop there and to wait until this promise is done, uh, is resolved, and then continue. So I have a very detailed explanation about how suspense work uh, on my channel. Please search on it. Um, just to search suspense, you'll get the, the video. And uh, if we take a look at this function component, we don't know actually there's some effect in there, right? Of course, there will be something in this red, but for this function itself, it doesn't care. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't know what happened in it, and it, it doesn't matter. So, what does what does React care? It actually cares about idempotence. So, idempotence means that if this function have a side effect, it's fine. Uh, it doesn't it, if if this function just a result in the same. Uh, for the whole system, no matter how many times I caught it, then it's fine. So it doesn't have to be pure, right? It doesn't have to be pure. It could have uh, fetch some API. It just don't just uh, don't fetch the API multiple time or alter the API. So there's some if you search on the wiki about Wikipedia about item buttons, uh, there's some very um, very easy to understand example like the crosswalk button is a example of item button system. Why? Because when you press it, it will turn, or, or, or in some areas, in some countries, it will turn into like a wait state, right? And then you click it again, it's still wait state. So no matter how many times you click it, it will just change for once. And then it will change to green, and uh, you can walk across the street. And uh, yeah, and then if you click that again, it's still green. It doesn't matter. It just... Uh, yeah, it matters only for the first time. And then no matter how you press the button, it doesn't matter. The other one is about the left elevator. Yeah. Well, uh, some 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 elevators allows you to cancel, right? It, it is not within our discussion now. Uh, we just simply means that if you want to choose a level, if you, if you tap it and it will be on, right? And the elevator will stop there. And if you click tap it again, yeah. Um, the elevator will uh, still stop there. So no matter how many times you tap the button, you will get the same result, even though it has some side effects, right? It has, it will like, like I think it turn, internally you will be scheduling something, but it's still an important system. Well, I mean, in some elevators, if you tap this very quickly, tap it twice, it allows you to cancel. Well, it's just something, it's something um, beyond our discussion here. This, we just, uh, Put some examples of item button. Okay, another one is uh, uh, HTTP protocol. Forget why we separate the uh, the method like get, like put, like delete, like post, right? Forget 
we are expecting that the get request doesn't change anything. You just get the data. So that means that the get method is idempotent. No matter how many times you, 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 you trigger the get request, it would not change the state. But if you, we post something or delete something or push something, it means you're ordering the server data and then that matters. If you like trigger it multiple times, the data will change multiple times, right? So it's not idempotent. But get is idempotent. So this is an example of, about idempotent. Remember, it doesn't have to be pure. Uh, you, you can do something, uh, a side effect, it's fine. But no matter how we, uh, how many times we run it, it should result in the same. Why this is important is because for suspense, as I explained in my uh, the video, please search on it, it just uh, stops rendering. So for this function, and this uh, this resource here, no matter how many times I call this function, it will only trigger the API request for once, and then the data will be cached, right? So it's idempotent, and the React because it's idempotent, the React runtime could safely just uh, try to re-render, like like check the do check the VDOM tree, and update it, and uh, just, just update it again, set a callback, and then update it again. Just uh, yeah, just uh, Let's do it safely without worrying about the, this uh, this function call just uh, causing some problems or just altering some data in the server side. Uh, it, it won't because it should be idempotent. So this is by idempotence. Now we can go back to our rules of React. This is a piece of article I have never read before. It's actually very. It's a three or five years ago. No, three years ago. Uh, I, strongly, I strong, strongly recommend you read this article. I'll put the link in the description. So the rules of React, what functions are pure? You, you see the double quote here. So it's just a general purity. It doesn't mean that it has to be uh, the pure in the functional programming, uh, in the functional programming realm. Okay, number of methods in React assumed to be pure. Yeah, constructor, pure. Yeah, you should not do something inside this constructor. And static get derived state from props, pure, yeah. Should component update, pure, of course. Render, pure. As we were already familiar with it, if we want to do some side effect, we should do some hook, uh, life hooks, right? About uh, in this component mount, we could initially API fetching, component did update, update, component will amount. Yeah, these functions are not required to be pure. And a handle click, of course, we usually wanted to trigger something. Uh, alter something so it, the event handlers are not required to be pure and render it has to be pure this is something we're already used to right we don't do things uh, breaking the purity of this render function awesome the first argument to set a state has to be pure yeah this generates a new state we don't yeah we don't do something the API request here but now the second one this is callback so yeah Function components also pure functions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to do something not pure, we use effect just to use the hooks. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, we could just think of it as pure. Getter. What does pure mean? Yeah, so here's the important. Pure in general has a specific meaning, but can be varied by definition. In React, it mostly means that it has to be idempotent. Meaning that if you talk about purity in React, it generally means that it has to be idempotent. It's not the functional programming a sense of purity. It will always return the same thing for the same input. Yeah. So what is forbidden? Return the variable binding unless the binding was newly created. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. There's uh, some example like uh, mutating objects create a render. Yeah. Mutating. Yeah. This is something. If you let what like something like this, you mutate it. It will not be. It will not be the state will not be uh, saved uh, in the next render because it will be initialized again, so it's not okay to do that. Mutate the property on the object unless an object needs to be created. There's an example later. Mutate the property on this, blah, blah, unless read a property from an object, unless the object is newly created or if the property will never change after it's read once. It is called lazy initialization. Read a variable binding unless the binding was newly created or blah, blah, blah. Call random, this is the world. Change, create a different result every time, so not not, not cool. Call set state. Um, we cannot call st set state in the render function uh, because you have to mutate. Issue an add request, post. Yeah, remember that post is not okay. 
and re- but gets in the initialized uh, lazy initialization, it's fine. Create a new component type. Uh huh. Call another function and then do it. Blah blah blah. Newly created above means that if the object or the closure around the variable binding was created inside the pure function, a call itself. Yeah. So if the yeah the, if it is the, you create some objects inside the function, yeah, it's fine. If you create some outside, yeah, uh, it's not good because you don't know what happens outside. Though that is not enough that this is an object created by Puris, blah blah blah. Yeah, allow. There are a few things that you might consider as not as pure, but it's fine. Well, this is something interesting. Reading these props or this state in class, yeah, yeah. Throwing errors at any other objects. Throwing errors will just to stop, like break, not break. I mean, yeah, the the this is an exception. Exception. Uh, the React will just stop rendering, so it's fine. Uh, nothing changed. Mutating object is okay as long as object is newly created. Yeah. So this is something. If you just, uh, uh, I will talk about it. This lazy. This is about lazy initialization. Newly created. We didn't bind it, so that blind me was newly created. You can call the function with a mutis of the pass on, blah blah, newly created. Mutating properties on this, blah blah blah. Yeah, you shouldn't add to request get is okay, but you need to, uh, I think, get, yeah. If it does not cause a write, and as long as result is not read by the per, per function, yeah, you can call the get, but generally you should cache the result. Yeah, you don't want the like, get repeat, uh, being called every time unless. You're doing some tracking, right? You're tracking the how many times the get function is called. But anyway, uh, if you, since you're not reading it, it does not cause the UI to change or internal state. Just to, just to put up a signal. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, why would you note something you're not going to read? It can be read to primary cache. Yeah. Okay, about lazy initialization. This actually this is very interesting, uh, very important about the suspense. Um, as I said. The red actually just a lazy initialization. It will fetch the data once, and then you will be reading from the cache, and or uh, through an error, through an uh, promise. So, if you have a function component um, lazy, I'm actually not not. Uh, it's not fine to just uh, read it, but right. But it's lazy initialized here, and uh, yeah, it's fine. Turn lazy, it's fine. Re, okay, read and mutate a value if it is for a purpose of lazy initialization. Yeah. Because it will be only caught once here. Even if you like get something, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. If not initialized, write, write the results of property and that point return the same value. So no matter how many times you call this function, the in lazy initialization will always be triggered here, but will be always triggered once. So there's only one slight difference is that the first time uh, the function is caught, it might be some uh, time lagging, right? If, but the the th uh, the calls after that, they will be for super fast. Uh, there will be no lag. So for actually for every call, even if even though it's lazy initialized, the result, the outcome of the each function call will be the same. This can also be used in multiple values as long as map as long as it's a unique key. Yeah, this is lazy initialization. Yeah, if a value not ready, you can throw in a promise, and it resolves when it's ready to be initialized. Yeah, so yeah, this is the core I think about the suspend. Okay, mutiny object created by render. We create an object here. Why? And you change it. This is not okay because uh, if we know if we want to achieve something like this, we need to put it in this into the state or use uh, the uh, reference, right? Use ref. To keep uh, the same reference across different render, because every time this function is called, the X will be initialized to a new object um, that implicitly frozen. Implicitly frozen means actually there will be new ones in a new function in the scope. Even if you said it true, the next time it it will not be saved. You, you increment it, the next time it still be zero. So it's not okay. You, you could set it into state. Yeah, it's it's fine. And while it's not, it's not. You should not do like this. If you want to do this, you put in a ref, or you just use set state. Yeah. So this is it. So this is about pure and idempotent. Uh, so from now on, and if you're talking about React, you could just say, okay, uh, we need the functions to be idempotent. Um, meaning, again, meaning, 
it could do something other than uh, other. Uh, it could some have some side effects like request an API, set up even listeners, as long as it's idempotent, as long as it generates the same outcome for the whole system, no matter how many times I triggered it. So that's the idempotent. Hope this video helps, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.